Welcome to another coffee tasting. My name is Aaron Taylor and I'm your host. Today we're going to be doing the uh, Yukon blend. Uh, the Yukon blend is a blend of Sumatra and Latin American beans and it's going to have notes of uh, earthy, earthy notes with a little bit of spicy notes as well. Um, so this coffee has an interesting history behind it on why it was created and how it was created. And then we're going to dive a little bit into the history of when Starbucks was first created and also a little bit about where they sourced their beans and the um, how Arabica beans first came to America. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get the brew started. And so with the Yukon blend, like I said, we're going to get like some of those, those earthy notes with a little bit of spiciness. And so with the, this is going to be the Sumatra and Latin American blend and that Sumatra flavor, uh, beans are going to give it that earthy notes while the Latin American blend is going to give it that a little bit of a spicy flavor. And then the, uh, Sumatra is also going to, uh, attribute to some of that spicy flavor as well. So it's going to help bring out some of those spicy notes. Uh, this coffee would be really good for uh, any time, uh, like the holidays, like Christmas, just because it's got those spice notes. And that's uh, why we probably get those spice notes in the Christmas blends is because it's really good with like a holiday dinner. Um, and so with this uh, coffee, it has a very, uh, very interesting story, that's for sure. Uh, I'm not a big Yukon fan because I don't like those earthy flavors, but this isn't going to be as nearly dark as like the Sumatra itself, just because we have that Latin American coffee that's going to, um, that actually makes it the medium roast that it really is. Um, so it's not as bitter, but then what's dying down some of those earthy notes is those spicy notes, and I'm not a big fan of those spicy notes either. So I would typically stray away from the from the Yukon blend just because it's not my particular f favorite flavors um, when I'm looking for a cup of coffee. But we're gonna see if that kind of changes through uh, different brew methods. With the uh, French press, we're probably gonna see more of those earthy notes come through. And with the uh, pour over, we're gonna see a little bit more of those spicy notes um, come out and that earthy boldness is going to take a little bit of a back seat. Um, so we're going to see if maybe I would prefer the French press over the pour over because if I had to choose between spicy and earthy, I would definitely go with the earthy, earthy notes. That's what I would, that's what I would go for. So the reason why I chose to do Yukon today uh, is because last week we did the Verona and we did Verona because Verona is the featured coffee of the month at Starbucks right now. Um, so I kind of wanted to explore the different coffees that are inside the Verona because the Verona is an 80-20 blend of Yukon and Italian. And... Um, I knew that there was a blend of Yukon and Italian, but it's interesting because Yukon and Italian both are blends themselves of Sumatra and other Latin American coffees. And so you've got like a, a crazy mixture of Sumatra and different Latin American coffees in one bag to make this earthy, spicy, uh, or the, er the earthy chocolate flavor that Verona is. And so with uh, with the Yukon, Yukon we're really getting those earthy flavors, and then the Italian is going to really get those chocolate flavors. And so <clears throat> this week we're trying the Yukon, and next week we're going to be uh, going into the Italian roast. So that's why we're we're doing this particular blend of coffees because we did Verona last week, and now we're exploring the different coffees that go inside. Verona, which is 80% Yukon and 20% Italian, and that Yukon is going to give it that earthy flavor, and the Italian is going to give it those the milk chocolate and dark chocolate notes. 
All right, so the coffee is just about done brewing here. So when I, when I drink coffee, I tend to lean more towards the blonde roast, and I look more for the milk chocolate, caramel sweet notes um, in my coffee, um, just because it's very smooth and mellow. Um, very easy to drink black. You don't have to add any cream or sugar to make it um, to mellow it out or anything. Um, but if I mean, if you do like your coffee bold and dark, that's your personal flavor preference. I myself, I like a a lighter roast. As long as those lighter roasts aren't too acidic and bright, because uh, some some coffees have like really bright acidic notes like a like a berry note or a herbal notes and I'm uh, I don't like that herbal notes because it leaves you with a dry palate and with that dry palate you really need something else to pair with something savory and you don't always have something savory to pair your coffee with all right so immediately right off the bat when I smell the pour over coffee I'm really getting that uh, that spicy uh, smell with a little bit of earthiness. Wow. Okay. That is... The spice on that is intense. It's like really hitting the sides of my tongue right now. Uh, it's a really bright and acidic spice flavor. Not a whole lot of bitter flavors going on in the center of my tongue. There's a little bit, a little bit there, but um, the sides of my tongue are so overwhelmed with that spice flavor um, that you don't really notice those bitters impacting the center of your tongue. That is a very, very intense cup of coffee. It's a, it's a smack in the face kind of. Yeah, not my favorite, that is for sure. I do not like that bright, spicy flavor that that coffee has, uh, very intense. Um, it's got a very um, lingering, woodsy spice flavor too, like almost like a, almost like a campfire. And there's probably some of that earthiness coming in there, giving it that, that earthy flavor with a, a tribute with the spice flavor, it gives it a roast. You get some of that roasty flavor that you get with the Sumatra. All right, so now let's try the coffee press. With the coffee press, I am going to assume that we're going to get a lot more of those earthy flavors, less of those spicy notes. It's going to be a little bit more bitter, but it's not going to impact the sides of my tongue as much. That's what I'm assuming. We'll find out what we're really going to get in just a moment. So immediately off the bat, as soon as I smell it, I'm getting a lot more of those bitter notes that I expected I would get. And so now we're going to go ahead and taste it. That is much better. Okay. So for me, the French press is going to be much better just because um, the roasty spiciness of the pour over it really takes a back seat like there's it's still there but it's not nearly as intense as it was on the pour over the french press is really nice because we're getting a lot more of those bitters coming forward uh really like taking part of the stage of the palate um and then it's kind of balancing the cup because with this it's kind of with the pour over, it's a little bit imbalanced for me uh, because um, the ro that bright roasty flavor just totally overwhelms the palate of your tongue. While this, we're getting more of those bitter flavors, but we're still getting that spice flavors. Um, and they balance each other out to make a well medium balanced cup to where neither of the flavors are really overwhelming the palate. What's nice too is it doesn't linger on the tongue very much either. So the 
Um, even with the pour over, it didn't linger that much, but it did have that strong like punch, um, initial like bright spicy punch to it. But um, it doesn't it doesn't hold on. So there's there's that as well with this coffee. Um, if you're not looking for a cup that holds on to your tongue uh, and then leaves its flavor behind, um, this is a, a fairly decent cup of coffee on the on the coffee press. I really like it. It's much much smoother on the coffee press in my opinion, just because the flavors are more balanced to where they all the f different flavors that we're tasting take part on the palate of the tongue. While the pour over, you're getting mainly that spice flavor. So if I were to choose a particular brew for this cup, it's going to be the uh, French press. All right. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the history of Yukon blend, how it came to be, and it also ties in a little bit about with the history of Starbucks itself. So we're going to start with the history of Starbucks. So a lot, a lot of people know that Starbucks was founded in 1971. Um, not a lot of people know the names of the founders. I don't know them by heart. Uh, but it's um, the founders. Their names were Jerry Baldwin, uh, Gordon Bowker, and Zeb Siegel. And so they've. They founded Starbucks in 1971, and they sourced their unroasted coffee beans from Pete, Pete's Coffee. And so they, um, back in the 1950s, that's when Pete started exporting or importing uh, Arabica high-quality coffee beans to America. Um, and then in the 19 in 1966 is when Pete opened up his first coffee shop, Pete's Coffee and Tea, and uh, his business boomed. And um, in 1971, uh, the founders of Starbucks they n noticed this trend with Pete's Coffee, and they wanted to be another supplier of high quality arabica beans and so they started sourcing their beans from pete and that's the reason why they started sourcing their beans uh from pete's coffees because they wanted to um supply high quality arabica beans just like pete was himself because it was successful and people wanted that elevated coffee flavor experience um and so then now you have starbucks that's been established in 1971 in Seattle and um, you have people visiting the stores you have regulars and one day the owners of the uh, original store wanted to create a special blend for a captain of a fisher boat a fisherman boat and so they needed to create a blend of coffee that really uh, like really made you feel warm and um, in like the winter time because they were out on the ocean uh, fishing for months at a time uh, in the in the freezing north at the, as well. So you needed a, a nice roasty bold cup of coffee, and so that's why they chose the blend of Sumatra and Latin America and the uh, reason why they chose these specific blends is because the flavors that they bring to the table and so with the earthy flavor and that roastiness combined and as you drink the cup of coffee just the roasty earthy flavors all on its own give like a sense of of warmth so even as the coffee starts to grow cold those those roasty earthy flavors are warmth suggestive so you you immediately start to feel warm and so that's why he went with those particular flavors because when you're when you're cold and you're freezing outside having um, not just a hot cup of coffee but those flavors that attribute to maybe sitting in front of a, a roasting campfire um, you're going to taste the, some of those flavors in the roasty earthiness uh, of this coffee. So it's going to, just in the flavors, it's going to give you that, that feeling of 
of warmth, like I said, and that's um, why these flavors were chosen for the, this fishing captain. And it's, it's really cool to learn the background on how particular blends were created. And so this was, this coffee was meant for being out in the cold, um, out on the water and, and facing uh, icy storms. And that's why uh, this particular cup of coffee uh, has the flavors uh, that it has. And it's very interesting because um, a lot of our small law coffees, they have really cool individual stories from their particular farmers, um, which is really cool to learn about the, the culture and the history of the farmers themselves, the people who grow the coffee. Um, but I never really thought to think about like how particular blends were created. And after learning about this blend, I'm actually a little bit more curious about other blends. Um, like what inspired their creation? Why were they created? Who were they created for? Because I didn't know that Yukon blend was created for a specific person, a captain of a fishing boat. And so that gives it a little bit more meaning and impact to the coffee. You know, it's almost like a tribute to that particular fishing boat and that captain every time you drink a cup of Yukon. And so that's really cool too. So we're learning a little bit about uh, the history of Seattle, its fishermen, um, and then how coffee was created for a particular individual um, and how they chose specific flavors to enhance and make their workspace more comfortable. Um, I guess you could say, you know, the, the warm roasty feeling is going to make you more comfortable in a cold environment. So they went for flavor notes that is going to impact the workspace and their living uh, quality, which is really cool. The, the fact that they um, took the effort and wanted to create a a better work environment for some of the, the local fishermen uh, is, is an inspiring story and in how we can do different things for our local communities um, to make their livelihoods better and inspire other people. And that's, that's really cool that that's what these coffee tastings are really all about. It's all about inspiration um, and me trying to inspire you guys through just culture and story and how um, you can impact someone's lives, uh, not through just coffee, but through anything. But coffee can be a great example on how you can impact someone's life. Um, and then you can apply that uh, to any other daily routine to try and impact someone's life uh, in a positive way. Uh, and that's just important to important to note and try and keep at the top of your brain is how are you going to positively impact someone around you uh, today? Um, so that's what we're going to take away from this coffee tasting is impacting uh, people around us, impacting someone in our community in a positive way um, through daily acts of kindness or or willingness of servitude. Um, because uh, the creators of Starbucks, the original, the original founders of Starbucks, they went out of their way to to make this particular blend for a fishing captain uh, to make not just his but his entire crew their livelihoods uh, much better by having a a specialty blend of coffee just for them uh, to keep them warm. Uh, and to give, also give them that illusion of warmness through the roasty, earthy flavors as well. And the illusion of warmness is very important. Um, just having the illusion of warmness can trick your mind uh, into thinking that your, uh, your body temperature is the appropriate heat and can save a lot of energy. So when, you're, when your brain starts to think that you're getting too cold... Uh, there's like a sensor in the back of our brain that regulates our, our, our temperature and it's, it's part of our biology. And when that happens, 
there's like a trigger in our body that that creates our muscles tense in our in our arms, and that's those little goosebumps that you get when you're cold. It's our muscles tensing, and they're they're like slightly vibrating. And what that is is it's creating body warmth through muscle tension, and that. It's that's not energy free. When you start to shiver and 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 get those goosebumps, your body's using energy to do that. And so, if you can have the feeling of warmth and kind of trick your body into thinking you're warm enough, um, you're still gonna you're still gonna give off body heat to keep yourself warm. But you're not going to go through that excess energy that might cost you the energy that you need to maybe stay on the boat or or do your job um, because that could be physically draining um, having that that constant that shiver of months muscle tension um, being tense all the time it can also affect like uh, your how relaxed you are. Uh, in the job and then uh, you could injure yourself if you're too tense well especially while working in a boat where all your equipment is heavy uh, and it requires a lot of manual labor to move a lot of that stuff around and so if you're if you're cold and your body's tensed up from your body from your muscles being tense from freezing uh, you're you might strain a muscle you can uh, pull your uh, throw your back out very easily so uh, the coffee could not only just impact their level of awareness um, through caffeine but also relax the body in a way to where that they are safely doing their job uh, because their muscles are relaxed so uh, there's a lot of things uh, to take in a, that that could be a factor on like why they chose the specific flavors uh, and then um, the positive things that um, coffee helps with these particular group of people. Uh, it's interesting to think about now that I'm like really thinking about it. Um, but yeah, that's that's the story of the Yukon blend. It was created for a fishing captain for him and his crew to make their livelihoods more better on the freezing uh, ocean uh, while out months at a time. All right. Thank you guys for joining me on today's coffee tasting. Uh, if you guys are joining me for the first time, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe button down below. If you guys are joining me again, welcome back. Thank you guys for tuning in another time. And if you haven't had a chance to hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button down below. That way you guys will know next time I'm live without having to check it out. If you guys enjoyed today's coffee tasting, go ahead and hit the link down below. That's going to be a list of all the coffee tastings that I've done in the past. And the link above is just a list of videos that YouTube thinks that you might like. Have a great day, guys. Thanks again.